Welcome to the kitchen and for another round of RV fifth wheel remodeling. We made it through the storm. We made it through the storm. It sounded like a hurricane outside. It is now cold as all hell, cold for North Carolina, but we made it. And all the Southerners were so disappointed because they just wanted snow so bad. So I spent the night doing, while they were looking outside waiting for snow, I did what I'm best at, which is making fun of people. So I posted this picture of empty store shelves because anytime there's snow or a hurricane, people go to the store, take pictures of the shelves, and talk about how all the bread and milk is gone. So I posted a picture and I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is your future cast. This is a picture of the at-home pregnancy test aisle in Walmart. Have a responsible southern snow day or get a book. We already have too many damn people in this town. I mean, for God's sake. And in nine months, when we have a little population boom, which always happens after a hurricane or a snowstorm, don't tell me it was a surprise baby. There's no such thing as surprise babies. Oh, this is our, he's just our little surprise. Do you not know what's causing it? I'm gonna show you a much easier way to put curtains up in a very narrow space in an RV without causing too much chaos. All right, so in the kitchen, see this space here? This is terribly narrow. You are not going to fit any kind of standard curtain in this area, unless you cut it. If you cut it, you've afraid bottom. It looks like hell. You're not doing that. The only thing that you can put in here, I forget the exact measurement, is a valance. The problem with a valance is that it's one piece. So you're never going to be able to open that up. The standard here, what it came with, is that clunky valance. And the valance itself is structurally well designed, but I did not, it just kind of like blocked everything off here that I didn't really enjoy. And it didn't have the blackout shades. It had cheap plastic flimsy uh, blinds. And I, I just I just didn't like them. So I have a problem. I have a very narrow space. I want to be able to let light in at my choosing, but I also want privacy at my choosing. So really, the only thing that I could think of was a custom curtain, and a custom curtain is gonna cost a fortune. So I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Plus, I don't really wanna spend a whole lot of money on kitchen curtains because one of the big issues that I'm dealing with in the fifth wheel that I never dealt with in the van, oddly enough, is if you cook anything inside here, all the fabrics, your clothes, the couch, everything smells like food, which I find, ugh. Oh, I hate that. I hate when you walk into a house and it smells like food. So I, I don't really want like high quality materials around here because I'm going to have to wash them frequently. They'll get wrinkled or I'll have to replace them kind of ongoing because they just get nasty. Okay, so I have a space issue and I have a fabric issue and I have a budget issue. What I've seen a lot of people do, and I have mentioned this several times, is they just, they tip command strips and like a really thin rod and they put up shears. I don't know why everyone is so hell bent on these command strips because if you look at the structure of the cornice that came with your RV, it's pretty heavy. And the brackets that are on the wall to support that cornice to hold it up are also pretty heavy duty. Where they are attached to the wall, chances are, is where the stud is. Now, RVs kind of get built uh, from the inside out, so they know where the studs are. Finding studs in an RV is very, very, very difficult, and it's not the standard. In a house, it's 16 on center, 16 inches on center. In an RV, it's anybody's guess, and I've used a stud finder, and I can't find where they are. So I'm going to leverage where the brackets already are because I'm hoping that they already put them in studs and try to just reconfigure what I did with the height issue with the budget issue and this is what I came up with. These are called tea towels and they are a very lightweight fabric. They are kind of designed to be a little bit wrinkled uh, almost like the fabric is sort of distressed and that I wanted because anytime you launder a thin fabric or a curtain, chances are it's going to come out of the dryer wrinkled and then you have to iron it and I don't have an iron and I don't care enough. So I wanted something that was already pre-wrinkled. The tea towels, I tried this two different ways. The first way I tried it and I've seen people do it where they just kind of 
like bunch up the towel and then they use these curtain clips and they do it like this and the problem with that was that they sort of puddled on the counter and that is not very sanitary so I X that idea and then for the second attempt which I ultimately stuck with I just folded it in half so I already have a seam at the bottom and then I pleated you know just sort of like weave it back and forth pleated it clipped it with the little clips and then I can either pull it back and it will fold in I'm, I feel like I'm doing a really bad magic trick right now <laughs> it will either fold in on its pleats and just kind of stay at the side without tie backs or if I extend these little clips it will fold out like a curtain and it provides enough privacy to where you can't see what's going on in here but it does still let light through and I wasn't quite sure when I hung them up and now that they're up I think that they're great and if I spill my coke zero everywhere I can just use the curtains to clean it up not only that but it was pretty inexpensive so the curtain rod I and I'll put links to everything I th I think the curtain rod was like 25 and then the clips I have to order more clips because I want to put more of these up I think they were about nine and then each package of the cloths was like 15 and that is nowhere near the price that you're gonna pay for custom curtains so I think it worked out but when I opened up the um, curtain rod and I'm feeling kind of the weight of it and I thought I'm not sure that it's gonna hold but I took the brackets and I drilled them right back into where the original RVs cornices were bracketed so I used the holes that the manufacturer had already provided put them right back in there and now I can have pretty ample coverage without a lot of money and without sort of reinventing the wheel that works for me let's go check out the makeout couch this is not fully finished so you're seeing an early release which is fine because we've got to do the big reveal at the end anyway but the Grand Design 28 BH bunkhouse comes with the traditional u-shaped dinette for sitting down eating dinner blah 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 it was terribly uncomfortable terribly uncomfortable the table was like really close to your body and I'm small so if I'm uncomfortable any like normal sized human being is going to be in agony the whole thing was uncomfortable you couldn't sit there and you know the the couch the dinette is over here and the TV is over here so logically this is kind of where you want to lay out and chill I knew that I could take the table legs down which I did and that the table would come down and I could use the cushions to make a bed so I started doing this and I played Tetris with these cushions for I swear like almost a whole day I had half the grand design owners forum taking pictures of their cushions and we could not figure out how to get these cushions into a bed I called grand design and it took almost two weeks three weeks a lot of time and they sent me extra cushions and other cushions and everyone was trying to figure out how to get these things to fit into a bed and it just didn't finally they went out to where they actually make the fifth wheel and somehow the guys in the service bay figured it out they sent me a photo I put it together the way that they rec uh, recommended and I laid down on it and I just didn't like it it was so uncomfortable and this is supposed to be like my chill pad so I really wanted something very luxurious when I was painting the bunk room I moved one of the mattresses from the bunk room out here and that I really like I haven't come up with a way to cover this mattress in a way that I like so what you're gonna see on here is wrinkly right out of the box it's a sateen standard mattress cover I put some sheet clips on it these are sheet suspenders they're designed to like pull the fabric tight and it didn't work I just think that these mattresses these RV mattresses are so thin that there's just too much fabric so I've not figured this part out but what I wanted to do in here is referred to as layering whites so I wanted to get different shades of white and ivory and everything else match it to the curtains match it to the cornices make myself some kind of giant fainting chair so when I get dramatic I can throw myself into it but I want I wanted like a really cozy spot because I didn't have that in the van 
in the van, if I was getting into bed, I was getting into bed to go to sleep. And now I have the ability to kind of finish my work. And when I'm done, curl up with this blanket. This blanket was the most expensive purchase of everything here, but it's so warm and fuzzy that it's a worthwhile splurge. Everything here, except the sheets and the suspenders, came from Home Goods. And Home Goods, ladies, I know you hear me. You can't get a better deal on pillows and pretty much anything than at Home Goods. So this is kind of our prototype. I'm gonna get some different size pillows, different colors, try a couple things out, but I'm just so happy with it. I feel like it's like, it's it's more babe cavey. This is more babe cavey. It's still the war wagon, it's still badass, but now it's mine. And this, you know, and I really enjoy reading everyone's comments. Well, some of you, not all of you. <laughs> but I love doing this. I love taking spaces and areas that are not supposed to be beautiful or people don't think they can be beautiful and making them babe cavey. That's my thing. I love doing it. I've got, I had so much fun today putting this together. Even though the paint and the tile was a real pain in the ass, it made all the difference in the world. And I felt the same way about doing the babe bus and about doing my house. It's just, it's fun. It uses all the parts of my brain that I enjoy putting together, which is I have a problem. I have spaces that are not comfortable. They're not pretty. I have a budget. I definitely have a budget. And uh, I, it's my home. So I gotta, I gotta make it my own. So it was a lot of fun. Anyway, we're, we're gonna just gonna keep on going, keep on ripping this thing apart, even though it's brand new and doesn't need to be ripped apart, and just do our own thing, because that's what we do here.